Okay. I'm so sorry. I don't know if you'll get to this, but um, for the italicized journal, in terms of like biology, they've always told us for. I know for the title, you don't capitalize every word. You only capitalize the first. Right. But do the journal? You the capitalize? journal gets all. Okay, that's what I thought. Thank you, sir. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So random, arbitrary, uh, annoying rules. Um, but I've got a short PowerPoint here to try to pitch to you that the formatting in APA style maps onto some general values we have in psychology and values that we have for science writing in general. So I hope this isn't just a real hassle trying to figure out where the periods go or what goes inside the parentheses, but also kind of a reminder of scientific values of what counts as evidence how we cite each other, how we recognize that science is connected knowledge. Um, I'd like to start with one of the very first scientific societies um, in the late 1600s. Uh, it was founded the Royal Society of London for Improving Natural Knowledge, uh, shortened to the Royal Society going forward. Um, but it was basically a bunch of philosophers that said, how do we improve natural knowledge? How do we get more knowledge? How do we create knowledge? These are philosophers who are interested in those kinds of questions. Um, and they met and they talked about how to improve knowledge. Um, this was the beginnings of setting up the scientific method in a systematic way um, in England, obviously. Um, and, uh, and their motto, here's their seal, their motto is, Nullius in verba. So I've got that in fancy Roman letters here. Does anyone take Latin? I want to take a guess what nullius in verba means. Sometimes you can kind of make a guess on one, one or two of the words. Verba is like verbal, like words, right? That makes sense. Um, nullius or null is like not. So the, the motto of the first, one of the first scientific societies was don't take anyone's word for it. That's basically what this translates to, basically how they meant it, was don't take anyone's word for it. You might think that's kind of an odd statement for an kind of esteemed scientific society, but the beginnings of science are don't take anyone's word for it. Don't trust anyone's authority. Um, here's one of the members of that uh, STEAM society, Robert Hooke, one of the first to use a microscope to uh, investigate the world. Here's his famous drawing of a flea. Um, and part of the point here is that what they were doing is saying, look at this microscope. We can look at fleas. Awesome. Right? But don't take my word for it. Come to our meetings and look in the microscope. Look for yourself. Right? I'll tell you how to make a microscope. I'll tell you how to you know, stain the flea or how to put the flea there so you can look at it yourself. So the big point here is that it's not that we're making knowledge, trust us, but we're making knowledge using this method. Don't trust anyone. Come see for yourself. Okay? So I've got Scarface there. People still watch Scarface. Do I trust? Me, that's it. Right? This is the beginning of, of science as well. Who do I trust? My own eyes. Right? Okay. So, in science writing, there's a kind of skepticism about any claims that you make. Okay? So if you, if you say, um, I don't know, something like uh, inattention and distraction is on the rise. People are on their smartphones all the time, and so people are more distracted. That, that is actually a scientific claim. How do we know that? How do you know that people are more distracted? I'm not saying you're wrong, right? But I want you to say, OK, how have you observed that? Tell me how you know that. And tell me how I could observe that, right? Tell me how I could confirm that, that fact. Opioid abuse is on the rise. That is a fact, but I want to know how have you observed that? What are the statistics? How have they measured that? Okay. Um, and so what this 
style of writing does is it forces you to ask, how do you know that? And then tell me the experiment so I can see for myself. What, when you read scientific experiments, part of the point is in the method section, they tell you how they found that so that potentially you could run that experiment yourself. We're a little bit beyond, like, here's how you make the microscope so you can draw your own flea, right? A lot of these experiments that you're reading about, you wouldn't necessarily be able to run yourself. But at least you can see how they ran it. You can see the methods that they used, the people that they tested, how they tested them. So that's really the point of, um, of this scientific writing style is referring people, don't say, don't take my word for it. These people did a study, that's how, many, how they tested it, that's what they found. Okay, APA style, the way that we refer to experiments, the way that we say we know something, is the author who did the study. So we give the author credit in APA style, not the institution necessarily. <coughs> not the journal, but we give the person the credit. And then, which study, the style there is we refer to which experiment, which study, by the year. So, Reiner 2013 demonstrated that general psychology classes can be super awesome. If you wanted to read about that experiment, you could go to the references section and find the journal and title and figure that out, okay? But the APA style is just often here in the text, in text citations, super simple. Author and year. There's two general styles. You can say Reiner 2013 demonstrated, where Reiner is the subject of the sentence here. You can also just make a claim and then back up that claim with an author year parenthetical citation. Okay? So is this clear? Questions about this? I like this because it's very simple and straightforward. You don't have to bother with first names, with journal titles, with was it a book or not. It's just getting straight to what did they find? What was the experiment? What were the results? What did they test? Okay, what did they measure? All right, you'll also notice um, in the APA style handout I gave you, no direct quotes. This is something that is, I'd say, relatively unique to psychology and science, but again, links to the values in science. This, what a piece of evidence is in science is the experiment, what they found. When I do an experiment, when I do a study and talk about the results, and I write about the results, when someone is going to give me credit for doing that study, I don't really care that they use the words that I use to describe it. Because that's not how I put all my time into like, my dissertation or the different studies that I've done, right? Any scientist that all the time and energy they put into their work of scholarship, into the work of creating knowledge, is designing the experiment, carrying out the experiment, and analyzing the results, right? So that is the, the important part of the knowledge. It's not the particular turn of phrase they use. They spend years designing a study, carrying out the study, and like months writing up. You know, a two-page article in science might describe in a scientific journal might describe ten years of work. And so, when you're when we're describing it, you don't use a direct quote. You say what they found, okay? What methods they use, what experiment they they design. Um, okay, questions about that? Great. Um, in this PowerPoint. Uh, I also have a little example on how to do two authors. Um, both of these examples are acceptable. Um, 
I'll also mention here, so something like this, students majoring in psychology have higher salaries, greater life satisfaction, taller children have longer and more illustrious hair than biology majors. I could cite that, and maybe I did one experiment for all of that. Maybe there's four different experiments. Maybe there's another study that found, you know, and found higher salaries. You could do higher salaries and then parentheses, you know, uh, farmer 2017, something like that. Okay? So you don't have to give a whole paragraph to describing something. Sometimes you just want to make one claim that psychologists have higher salaries than biology. I'm not sure that's the case. But you guys get the idea here? Great. Okay. Um, here is a little table of reference to show you how to do one or more authors, um, when you do at all. I'm not going to go through all of this. I'm going to write all this down, but it's kind of a reference. A good, another good reference, if you're having questions like Addison had about italicized or um, you know, capitalized, things like that, you can go to the Purdue OWL, and I've got a link uh, for that on Canvas, the Purdue OWL. Just got lots of great uh, resources for APA style. There's overview of a little workshop if you want to do that. But then if you're wondering, oh, how do I cite a video? You can find it in here. Okay? Great. Okay. So, um, in the so that's in text, that's in the text of your paper, right? Um, in the reference section, very end, that's where we give all the information, okay? Uh, no first names, just initials. I kind of like this because it's gender blind, right? The authors who just give credit to the science, give credit to who they are, not necessarily um, indicate first names. Um, we only capitalize the first word, the title unless it's a proper noun, and then you italicize and capitalize the journal title. Okay? You use ampersand instead of and in the references section. So again, it's references, not work cited, not bibliography. References. For your research paper summary article, that will have one reference, right? So you'll cite it in your paper, and then you'll have one reference to roughly cite. Okay? Great. Okay, so now take out your APA style uh, handout that I just gave you, and do the first, uh, first few exercises. If someone had written those, how would you correct it to be APA style? So correct those, and then chat with your neighbors. 